Hey, it's Ryan over at Two Minute Tennis. So excited to make this video. I'm gonna go over the swing checkpoints I use when analyzing video and doing video private lessons. And when I'm on court, the swing checkpoints are checkpoints throughout the swing where you can start at the beginning and work through and you look for the first checkpoint that breaks down and then you begin diagnosing why is that checkpoint breaking down. But you gotta know the checkpoints in each swing. We're gonna go forehand volley, backhand volley, forehand ground stroke, backhand ground stroke, slice backhand, serve and overhead. So excited to do this for you. Let's begin. So the ready position for a forehand volley is the first checkpoint. Elbows out, not elbows in. Elbows out, when your elbow is in, that's when you tend to take the racket too far back. You see players all the time and the racket's like this. And then the coach puts their back up against the fence to try to get the racket to be more straight up and down. No, 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 no. Or so that the racket doesn't go so far back. The fix is elbow out. So start with your elbows out, so when you turn, now your racket's more flat against the back of the ball. So elbows out in the ready position. Whether it's a backhand or forehand, elbows are out. That's checkpoint one. Checkpoint two is turning, unit turn, both hands going over. You don't wanna drop this arm. You wanna turn with both hands going over. Back elbow is still up to square up the racket. I can still put backspin a little bit if I want to, but getting that back elbow up squares up the racket, helps me hit a more secure shot. This is checkpoint two. Checkpoint one, checkpoint two. Checkpoint three is the contact. My non-hitting hand is still out in front. My elbows are still out rather than elbows in and just slicing a lot. Get your elbows out, you'll hit a much flatter volley. It's not like the more backspin you put on the volley, the better. If you wanna put a tiny bit of backspin on the ball, fine. If you wanna hit a flat volley where you can really pound it, especially when you're poaching and doubles, that's a great volley to use. But get the elbows out even at contact. I'm telling you, you may never have heard that, it's gonna help your volley. Checkpoint number four is going out and finishing actually in your left hand if you're right-handed. So it's checkpoint one, checkpoint two, checkpoint three, checkpoint four. All right, now to the backhand volley. We're gonna do both the one-handed and two-handed backhand. So elbows out again. We want those elbows out. Checkpoint number one. When you turn for the backhand volley, you want this back elbow up. Why do you want the back elbow up? So that your racket doesn't lay open. That explains why a few seconds ago, I told you on the forehand volley to get the back elbow up. If the back elbow is supposed to be up on the backhand volley to keep the racket more square and to keep a backswing from being too big, then the same would apply on the other side, getting the elbow up to keep those strings forward and make sure the swing is not too big. So split step, athletic ready position, elbows out and uh, away from me is checkpoint one. Again, not this, this, elbows out. Checkpoint two is the turn. You'll also notice I change grip. I teach change grips at the net. You'll be right 95% of the time. And the 5% of the time you don't have enough time to change your grip, don't. And then you'll just be like everyone else. But changing the grip squares up the racket. You hit amazing volleys. Not a lot of people teach it, but the people who learn it and do it, they love their volleys more than they ever have with the one grip system. Split step, turn, checkpoint number two. Arm is extended. I'm placing the racket, by the way, in the way of the ball. So if the ball's gonna arrive low, I'm gonna set it here and I'm gonna go out. But the goal is put the racket in the way of the ball. I've already changed my grip. By the time I make this move, I've already changed my grip. Checkpoint number three is the contact. Arm is extended, racket is slightly above the hand. My left hand starts going back, since I'm a right-hander, as a counterweight to keep my body sideways. And checkpoint number four is the extension out toward my target, non-hitting hand goes back. So it's checkpoint one, checkpoint two, contact checkpoint three, checkpoint four. One thing I didn't mention is both on the forehand and backhand volley, it is best if you can to step with the opposite foot. All right, now when it comes to the two-handed backhand volley, it's different right from the beginning and in the ready position. See, the non-dominant hand on a one-handed backhand is on the throat of the racket. Helps you really control the racket head. But as a two-hander, you want both hands on the grip and you wanna make sure if you're a coach that you're looking at your students. If you are a player and you use a two-handed backhand volley, I'm a huge fan of the two-handed backhand volley for amateur tennis, for adults, for juniors who are struggling with their one-handed backhand and they want that extra stability, just like a, a two-handed backhand ground stroke is really great for beginners and intermediates, uh, intermediate players, it's great at the net too. Yeah, does it have all of the advantages of a one-hander? No, but for players who really are not trying to become pro tennis players and they're just trying to have more fun on the court, a two-handed backhand volley can be a great, great asset. So, both hands on the grip this time, but the checkpoints are the same. Ready position, check, this is checkpoint one. Checkpoint two, making sure the back elbow's up so when the dro elbow drops, that's when the racket opens, and then you gotta do this stuff or chop the heck out of it. Get the elbows out in the ready position. If you're a coach who often has your students put their back up against the curtain to teach them, or the fence, to teach them to only take the racket to here, 
so that they don't take such a backswing. Rather than doing the drill, teach them the technique that's gonna fix it. And really the fix is get your elbows out. When your elbows are out and they stay out, now the racket stays perfectly straight up and down. Rather than dropping it and the racket goes back. Checkpoint one, checkpoint two, checkpoint three is the contact, checkpoint four is the extension out. Split step, checkpoint one, checkpoint two, checkpoint three, checkpoint four. If you wanna put a little backspin on the ball, that's fine. Split step, set the racket slightly above the ball, still with the back elbow up, slightly above the ball. If the ball's coming here, you can put it up here if you want. And go a little down if you wanna put a little backspin on the ball. But don't think that you gotta chop the heck out of the ball. Generally, flatter volleys really help the vast majority of tennis players who will never play pro tennis, who will never play college tennis, who are just looking to improve and have more fun on the court and maybe go up one level in their local league. Split step, turn, elbows out, not elbows in, elbows out. Checkpoint three is the contact, checkpoint four, go out towards your target. All right, let's go to the overhead. There are seven checkpoints on the overhead, swing checkpoints on the overhead. And they are the ready position, and I'll go through them. Let me go through them quickly and then I'll diagram each one. The ready position, the turn with both hands, the extension up as the racket knocks off the birthday hat, you come around on edge as you begin tucking the non-hitting arm, you begin pronating to make contact, fully pronate, strings are facing now the opposite direction, and then the follow through. So you got your ready position, it's the same as the volley ready position. When you're playing, you don't know if you're gonna get a lob or a ground stroke, so you're obviously gonna be making sure that you're ready for anything. The moment the ball goes up in the air, instead of pointing at the ball, do what the pros do initially. They turn with both hands. We talk about a unit turn on the forehand for racket speed and to get sideways. It's no different on the overhead. Turn with both hands on the racket. Now you'll notice my back elbow is up, because when my back elbow drops, that's when my racket head goes toward my head. When my back elbow is up, the racket can later on knock the birthday head off and actually move away from my back. So the goal is when you turn, turn with both hands. One drill I have my students do is they actually need to turn with just their non-hitting hand on the racket to practice that. Use your non-hitting hand to set the racket and you'll notice that my strings are pointing down. That's no different than the palm down position you'll wanna have on the serve. We'll do that in a few seconds. When you turn and you see the ball go up in the air, you're gonna turn with both hands. You're gonna make sure you have a continental grip. You're gonna turn with both hands. As the ball starts to peak, that's generally when you're gonna be able to reach up with your non-hitting hand. Don't point, please don't point. Just reach up with your non-hitting hand and knock the birthday hat off of your head. If you're wearing a birthday hat, the racket would knock in over your head. Checkpoint one, checkpoint two, reach up and begin knocking off the birthday hat. Checkpoint number four is tucking this non-hitting arm against your body as your racket comes around on edge, no different than the serve. Checkpoint five is hitting into the back of the ball, whether you're putting backspin on, I'm sorry, topspin on the ball or side spin on the ball, you wanna be pronating into contact. Checkpoint number six is full pronation and checkpoint seven is a follow through on the opposite side. Notice my non-hitting hand is still tucked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.